can actually see what I'm doing then. <laughs> I don't know if I declined or... Oh, there you go. Go live. I have to cover up. Hold on. Yay! Yay! <laughs> the and technical difficulties were so real. Huh? The technical difficulties were so real. I don't know if it was me or you, but I figured, oh my gosh. How are you doing? I'm I good. Why do you have sunglasses on? You because I can't be on, on the same screen as you. No, 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 no. <laughs> Take them off. Take them off? Mm -hmm. oh All right. Well, at least I'll have them Come on. Eyes. You look great, dude. How are you okay. doing? <laughs> I was like, oh, no, I'm the only one drinking. No, no, no. I would not do that to you. Um, how are you? I'm so excited that you're joining me. Oh, my God. Me too. You know how Thank many you. people saw your post and like my girlfriends were like, Wait, you're going on Shireen's? Like, she's my favorite dermatologist. Blah blah blah. I was really. Are you cool. kidding? Yeah, I no. Was, I was like, I was really. Like, I was like, you're damn, going Shireen's on that famous. Ricky show. Are you nuts? <laughs> no, I was like, I was really happy that like people respond so much to this stuff. It's cool. You're so sweet. Okay, yeah. so first of all, first of all, first yes. of all, so so self, how, do you, how do you pronounce your last name? Radakowski. The J is okay. silent. Yes. Okay, because I just call you Ratatata. Yeah, um, that's also totally acceptable. That's like, cool. Like, guess okay. what? It's like whoever wants to call me whatever can call them. Like, it's there's no rules. Okay, I love it. And then I know who you are. A bunch of people know who you are. But for the people, like, in the back, like my sister, who's basically had three kids in the past decade, who doesn't know anything. Oh, I'm impressed. Who, she, she's a hero. She's crazy. Who is Amrata? Um, I am a model and an actress wow. <laughs> and um, wow. an activist and, um, yeah. And in That's three words, good. how would your best friend describe you? I, you do not give yourself enough credit, but how does your Oh my God, she'd be you? like, she's the goofiest, um, like human with a big heart. That's probably what she would say. Well, if she's I'm, watched. I think she was. She was one of the people who was like, "I'm so excited. What are you gonna going to talk about?" So well, she should be watching. Well, so she, she she's. I think she definitely would hit the nail on the head with that one because you really are one of the sweetest people I know. And for somebody of your stature, it's you know, I appreciate it so much because it's not every day that you come across someone who has such an amazing platform like you do, who's also so down to earth. Um, Thanks, dude. That's so nice. It's, but it's true. Um, all right. So how have you been staying busy during quarantine? I'm going to first start off. So basically, so everybody knows, yeah, we're going to start off the interview with like, superficial questions that everybody kind of asked me to ask you. Yeah, and then we're going to scratch the surface. And I want them to see the side that I see of you. So okay. God, when are you gonna have your own talk show? You're so uh, good at this. I don't know when quarantine's over. I'm going back to work. Okay. okay. So <laughs> how Everyone's have gonna you be been sad. staying busy? <laughs> how have you been staying busy during quarantine? Um, okay, so I'm actually working. I don't think we've ever talked about this. And when I was like realizing we were about to go live, I was like, oh, this is going to be funny to her. Um, I'm actually working on a collection of essays, which is weirdly perfect for quarantine, um, <laughs> because obviously writing is such a solo activity. So um, the last four days, I've been writing a lot, which has been amazing and really great. Um, mm -hmm. But there have been weeks during quarantine where I haven't done anything. But you told me, I remember in the very beginning that you had like a hardcore schedule. Like I wake yeah. up at this time, I do this. Like you were super yeah. regimented. Yeah, I've been keeping it pretty regimented. I think that helps a lot. Um, I have like 9 a.m.s four days a week and that kind of gets me up and going in the morning, which is really nice. And like mm -hmm. their video calls and stuff. So I like have to kind of be presentable. So I have to like mm -hmm. drink coffee and shower. Um, and um, like I put on makeup for you today. I'm pretty, I, know, I, I put pretty it good about it. I was like, whoa, I was just like, let me just put this on. I was like, I haven't seen this in years. You're um, so pretty though. You don't need makeup. Um, um, I don't know. I agree with that. But um, anyway, so yeah, I've just been like, keeping it really regimented I've been reading a lot I watch too hot to handle like it's all a balancing act between like trash tv it's like really good books that I've been wanting to read for a long time and just like uh -huh. balancing it out okay I'm very interested to see what these essays are about though so you have to let us know when you decide to publish them because I know you've written a few things um yeah. and you write beautifully so I can't wait to see what those are going to be about yeah and... they're more personal than stuff I've written before I would say oh that's cool all right, two things everybody wants to know about. Number one, your abs. Number two, your butt. <laughs> okay, well. how, does, how do your abs stay the way they stay? What are you doing smooth? <laughs> um, okay, well, um, I was doing a booty, like, squat challenge. Uh-huh. Uh, it's not happening anymore. <laughs> 
we I was like really good at it for the first week. I was like mm -hmm. 15 reps of blah, 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 like soon the squat, blah, blah, blah. I think even actually posted on my stories and was like, whole new me, like, woo. Uh -huh. And then this last week, I've just been like, ah, literally, absolutely not. Um, so um, I am naturally very um, lucky to have a toned stomach, like genetically. Mm -hmm. So whenever people ask me about like my body I'm always I kind of hate it because I'm like oh, dude if there was a secret like fuck and I would tell you you know <laughs> all right so since, that, that, since, since it's just like you're genetically blessed which I mean you really are um what do you eat in a typical day then like mm. what do you eat today I've actually been cooking a lot um now that I I'm not typically like a huge chef um but obviously in this time like been cooking a ton um I pretty much start with like coffee in the morning I don't typically eat breakfast until like 11 um I'll have an egg maybe some toast um one I'm egg like, yeah girl you're like taking this too seriously like what you're like okay tomorrow I, I'm gonna yeah because I'm gonna what you're eating I'm like fine no I'll no and sometimes I have like cereal and sometimes mm -hmm. I don't have breakfast I mean it's just one of the things I will say and this is true for like everyone no matter what your genetics are or anything just like listening to your body which I can be very hard, but like I had a, the other day we had nachos at um, the house, me and Sibo made them. Uh -huh. And um, like the next day we were like, wow, like we really didn't need to eat those. And we just went for it and it was great and we loved it. But um, I think just like finding that balance, all that good stuff, so. Okay, and how's your beauty routine been throughout this time? Well, my skin kind of freaked out. I was posting um, and telling everyone um, because I was like, what the hell? And then there were all these articles that were basically like, yeah, people's skin are just freaking out during this time. Yes. Um, so I've recently, I've like started a new routine and it's actually, I mean, you, can, you can't totally see on this, but like it's, it's getting better. What are you using? Okay, I brought them into my bed because I Show me. that. Um, <laughs> so this is the retinol I, love I use. Your I'm so prepared. Um, I use this at night. This is okay. Dr. Dennis Gross. Do you know this one? Yeah. Okay. So I, do you like it? I'm like, uh oh, she doesn't like it. <laughs> oh no. Um, okay. So I basically, I wash my face with Dr. Loretta cleansing wash. Then okay. this is the new thing that you're going to be like, what the hell? But my girlfriend who's super into K beauty, um, mm -hmm. Rio uh, Vera Newton told me to get snail mucus, mucus or whatever. It just like, it basically makes you look all smooth and like, yes. Glistening. And apparently like glass it holds skin. the moisturizer better. So I do yeah. this. Then I put a little bit of the retinol on, and then I put a serum on. And right now I'm using the Dr. Loretta because that one came okay. um, with a new one. So I, I'm liking sunscreen? it. Are you wearing sunscreen? Yeah, and then I use the Dr. Loretta sunscreen during the day. Even okay. And I saw that on one of your pillow talks. You were like, you better wear sunscreen even if you're like during quarantine. So Because I know you're on your computer. Um, I am. Oh, my God. I didn't actually, actually think about that. That's crazy. Yeah, you're on your computer. Look, look at the blue screen, the light. What is a product you actually hate? Um, God, I don't like toner. I agree. It's like useless. Yeah, it just, I don't think my skin does well with toner. Like, I don't need it. Like, it, it dries out moisture. Yeah, you know, yeah, and toner, toner doesn't do that for me. So I've never really understood. I know people swear by toner. And if somebody has a toner that they love, like, convince me, but I haven't met a toner I've, I've loved. Okay, I like that. All right. Now, give me the dirt. What mm -hmm. is the procedure? or a product or something that everybody in your Hollywood shishi land is doing on the DL but that they're not talking about because we um, know we know shit is going down yes. but no one's talking about it so what's no one is talking heard? about it so i have to be totally honest like people don't really talk like even my friends in the community do not talk even when i know like they don't say anything down. like certain people who are clearly trying no to because the they're so worried about it um they're so worried about it the thing that like i think you do that i i've seen like i mean i don't know i'm just like a i'm like everybody else i love the before and afters um um there's the string uh-huh and that i feel like people are really like woo, into smiling out Okay, we'll talk about the strings on another pillow talk, but okay. interesting. And I, 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 also, oh, the other thing, uh -huh. and I'm not going to remember this, but it's like the, you take the fat from your back and your arms, you put it in your butt. Oh, like a fat transfer, you mean? I don't, I'm, see, like, I'm not good at this, but okay. I think that that, I think that that's a thing that's been happening. Hmm. I believe it. Okay, <laughs> so now that we've gotten all the beauty questions out of the way, I want to okay. scratch the surface. So tell me, where did you grow up, like your childhood? How did you get to where you are right now? How did you get to your start? 
Okay, well, let me give you an abbreviated version yeah. of my life story um, <laughs> real quick. Um, I was born in London um, to American parents. I grew up in San Diego, California. Um, my parents, my dad's a painter, my mom's a writer. So I spent a lot of our like summers traveling. Um, they're yeah. like kind of hippie people. Like we went to Europe a lot, not rich, but just like that was like the thing. We'd get like, you know, tickets to Europe and go to Mallorca and Ireland. They're two favorite places. They still go there to this day. Um, so I had a lot of time in Europe growing up. I fell in love with theater when I was a kid. I was like totally a theater nerd. Like a like Broadway nerd? Grade. Like a, oh, like. No, I was never, I'm not a good singer. I mean, <laughs> I like to think that I'm a good singer. Or like my jazz husband, hands. My husband's like hyping me up on quarantine because I just, you know how like when you're bored, you just sing out of nowhere. Oh my well, God, I, I bought a microphone. <laughs> yeah. An amplifying crazy. mic. Do you have that? No, I want like, I want to get a karaoke set. I really I, think this would be very fun. Oh my God. If you would stay five minutes, I would run down and bring you my microphone. I should have brought it up. Wait, I have a microphone really singing? that amplifies your voice and connects via Bluetooth to your phone. And so the music plays to the mic. This is a dream. Text me your address. I'm going to send you one as a gift. It's Literally, like this is crazy. Dream. My daughter's like, text me a up. link and I'll order it. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Okay, I'll send you the link. But my daughter. No, but I was not, like, I'm not good at singing. Even though I yeah. want a microphone, I'm not good at singing. Wait, okay, um, sorry. So I completely interrupted you. So then you no, were a Broadway no, please. kid. Um, I want it to be a combo. Um, so yeah, so then um, was into theater. People were like, oh, she's a model and being close to LA. I was in San Diego, so only two hours away. Um, eventually, my mom was like, oh, should we go get an acting agent? So I did that. I went into um, the acting agency. I like did a little monologue, auditioned. They signed me and then they were like, you should go see Ford Models. And I signed with Ford. I worked all throughout high school. It was an incredible way to make money. I paid for my first year of college at UCLA with my modeling money. Um, and then my career, I was really, it was right after the economy crashed, actually. I graduated in 2009. And I was majoring in art at UCLA. Okay. And I was like, and you were like what not, I to do. yeah, I was like, what yeah. is this career going to be like? I need, I need to make money. I need to survive. And at that point, I was starting to really work a lot and like model and my friends were fucking working in cafes excuse my French I don't know if that's bad right. um where um they were you know like wow you can go to wherever and make that amount of money like you should do this so I dropped out of college and then sort of things just I started acting again um and things kind of went from there obviously blurred lines like was the, kind of my breakout moment and then I did Gone Girl and um that was so you started in modeling and then you got into acting well no I started in I mean like historically yeah. I started in acting um I think that like when I left UCLA I wasn't like oh I'm gonna be a famous actress I was more interested in the money I could make modeling so it was just more my focus I, w I was like I'm gonna do this for a couple of years and then go back to school mm -hmm. so it was just like not part of the plan to you know whatever. and then when you got back into acting were you like kind of intimidated were you scared were you nervous were you like what the f am I doing um, no, because I'd always been acting. Like, I never stopped acting. Um, and I... But then were you intimidated know, when you were modeling? Were you, like, did you feel like... I mean, it's all intimidating. Yeah. Hello, being, like, 20 is intimidating. <laughs> You're scared of everything. Yeah. Um, I'm, like, I'm still scared of everything, but... Yeah, me too. I don't know what I'm saying. But, like, I was more scared then. Um, uh -huh. But, yeah, no, things kind of just, like, it was a lot of hard work. I mean, I think that a lot of people are like, oh, when was the moment? And it's like, dude, I was driving up to... LA when I was 16 like you know you've been doing it like all getting rejected for like the tiniest jobs ever and it it's took a lot of time so if you, I feel like you're like a very classic story where it appears like it was an overnight success and I bet everybody kind of associates you with Robin Thicke yeah um, and that blurred lines video but in fact it was like years and years in the making yeah yeah I mean it was beyond years in the making yeah. it was like so much hard work um yeah. and honestly I didn't even want to do that video when I got it so it's a funny it's a funny you kind of look you do look a little annoyed in some scenes like now that I know no you. intention that was intentional though oh it was I was like yeah oh, yeah yeah. Looking, yeah the director is actually I was like, still I'm a friend so of mine um Diane Martel and she's uh -huh. amazing and so cool she did all the Miley Cyrus like tour uh -huh. like creative direction um, shout out Diane if you're watching. Um, and you no, know, and it was a female DP who actually shoots for Anna Murata now. So it was all oh, women no. who shot it, which is cool. That's cool. Okay, yeah. so that leads me to my next thing. So not only were you a successful model, then a successful actress, and that's like the dream for like a bajillion people out there, especially in Hollywood. But now you're also a badass business owner. So for people who don't know, Emily has a brand called Anna Murata 
which makes beautiful clothes and beautiful basically swimwear. Yeah. Um, really pretty, really sexy. And she's really knocked it out of the park. How, when did you start it? Um, I started it two and a half years ago. What made you decide to say, I'm changing courses and I want to start my own business? I mean, for me, it didn't really feel like Emrata. I mean, you know, like you're on your personal account right now, but you have a brand. Like, and so for me, I had been already thinking of myself as a brand sort of since day one. Um, mm -hmm. And then obviously doing like Instagram promotional stuff. Um, I like did some licensing deals. Like I like designed a purse with a company and like that kind of stuff. And I was like, wow, these these things are selling really well and I'm getting a tiny percentage and these companies are getting a crazy amount and I'm like doing all the work. Mm -hmm. And um, also growing up in San Diego, like I'm a bikini girl. Like I love bathing suits. I always had, that was like, if I got extra money, I would go and buy an extra, like a new mm -hmm. bathing suit. Like that was always my thing. Um, so I wanted, it was just a very natural sort of jump for me. And um, yeah, I started a bit with six swimsuits. Um, we had only six for a year. And then we expanded into lingerie, and now we've gone into ready to wear. My oh, best wow. friend is my business partner, um, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, who actually I, I went to the same high school with. She lives in New York. She has a fa uh, fashion merchandising background, and yeah, it's like just us two. So that's it's like just my been really cool. Like I think for me, it's been about like having control over like designing something like even as an actress as a model you don't have control you're like a part of someone else's vision so um that's been like the best part and then also seeing my clothes on girls is just so and women it's amazing right I bet, I bet it's like almost like painting like when you paint or you draw something the fact that when you see it and everyone else can appreciate it you're like yeah but, it's yeah. just fun it's just so much like creative direction is so fun like i love it <laughs> what was the biggest obstacle do you think um when you were trying to get it off the ground um, for me, it was like, I don't have anybody and I know a lot of people who have like an uncle or a dad who are in business. And I didn't have anyone like that. Like my dad's a high school painting teacher, my mom's an English professor. And like all my extended family is like, maybe a lawyer, or, like doctor, but no one's like working in this space. So mm -hmm. having someone that I could really like, kind of I had to trust my gut and I didn't have someone who I could call and be like what do I do next um which was ultimately a good thing because it meant that I trusted myself and yeah. like did it all my on my own and own 100% of the company but um that was really scary and like I think there were so many moments where I was like am I stupid am I doing this wrong whatever and it took me it took I learned a lot from that experience about like trusting myself and being like okay I might not be an expert on this but I can learn yeah, I think listening to your gut is key. Like, yeah. no matter whether you're starting a multi bajillion dollar swimsuit line or you're starting, yeah. you know, a single coffee stand, I think just listening oh to your gut is key. Totally. I mean, you've done that so well. I have to say that since we're on here. I mean, I feel like a lot we're of people are watching. No, but it's true. I mean, like, it's so easy to listen to what other people tell you. But like, you have been really good about like being yourself and sharing that with people. And that can be really scary. So. It's it is scary. I, th I mean, I can't even imagine my platform is nothing compared to yours, but it well, is the scary. Platform is a platform. Yeah, I mean, the numbers are so abstract, right? Like right yeah. now, it's just like how many people are watching. I'm like, I can't even, like, I can't, my mind can't even like imagine. Yeah. No, I'm with you. So when going back to your brand, I mean, if you just looked at your website right now and you went in amarada.com, mm -hmm. um, I N A, by the way, guys, <laughs> um, it looks like you're just making six, like sexy clothing for women. But I know you for a few years, and I know that there's a much bigger message and mission behind your brand itself. And do you think that's right to say? Yeah, totally. I mean, I'm pretty proud of, like, the, especially in the last year, the kind of direction we've taken. Um, we've kind of introduced a new logo and just, um, you know, even the, the, the brand in Amarada means to be a muse. And so the idea is that you're your own muse. Um, like and that. these are, like, this is about women enjoying themselves, all different kinds of bodies and, like, we've had such an amazing, like, actually during COVID, this has been obviously a scary time to run a, mm -hmm. a clothing business, like very weird. Obviously, we're direct to consumer that gives us an advantage. But what's been really amazing to see is the community of women that wear our clothes. Like, mm -hmm. that's been so amazing to see that. So yeah, it's really about, um, I don't like using the word empowerment, because it gets overused. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's about like, making yourself feel good and buying things for yourself 
rather than for the world I like um, that. which is which is like, important to me very in line with like feminism kind of ideals what do you think like feminism means to you in that sense then <sighs> feminism i'm like we're basically trying to write a book about that girl okay fine <laughs> <laughs> i guess this is i'm not up. okay it's, um, a, bigger it's, a, good, it's, it's a, a bigger question topic. i mean to me it's about um it's about finding women finding power in whatever way they can because um, i feel like you've done that sorry to interrupt Thank because you. i was waiting mm -hmm. for you to say that because i feel like you specifically has have really taken ownership of your body especially yeah. being in a in an industry where they project the image that they want onto you yeah. and you've done it in such a way where you're like if i want to show my chest I've introduced a new logo and just, um, you know, even the, the, the brand Enamorata means to be a muse. And so the idea is that you're your own muse. Um, oh, and God. these are like, this is about women enjoying themselves, all different kinds of bodies. And like, we've had such an amazing, like, actually during COVID, this has been obviously a scary time to run a, mm -hmm. a clothing business, like very weird. Obviously, we're direct to consumer that gives us an advantage. But what's been really amazing to see is the community of women that wear our clothes. Like, mm -hmm. that's been so amazing to see that. So, yeah, it's really about, um, I don't like using the word empowerment because it gets overused. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's about, like, making yourself feel good and buying things for yourself rather than for the world, I like um, which is which is like, important to me. Very in line with like feminism kind of ideals. What do you think like feminism means to you in that sense then? <sighs> feminism, I'm like, we're basically trying to write a book about that girl. Okay, fine. <laughs> I guess I'm not up. Okay, it's, um, a that, it's a bigger topic. It's a great question. Topic. I mean, to me, it's about, um, it's about finding women finding power in whatever way they can. Because um, I feel like you've done that. Sorry to interrupt. Thank because you. I was waiting mm -hmm. for you to say that because I feel like you specifically has have really taken ownership of your body, especially yeah. being in a in an industry where they project the image that they want onto you. Yeah. And you've done it in such a way where you're like, if I want to show my chest, I want to show my boobs. And if I don't want to show it, I'm not going to show it. Yeah. Um, I, I, mean, I, I think, think for me, it was fun. about taking as like what we were just talking about, why I started in Amrata was about control and like having control over my image and having control over like, everything and I think that you know when I was 19 20 that wasn't a part of my life as much mm -hmm. and I'm happy that now you know I'm 20 and like I feel like that's been a huge part of my journey and it makes me happy it makes me feel better and I want young women to also have that experience of taking back control and power if they can and you don't photoshop any of your images no we I mean if you go on our website like you can see we have um all like you can see everything and like obviously we want our girls looking their best and like the lighting's beautiful mm -hmm. and everything but yeah we don't like photoshop okay i mean i could honestly see somebody t like like a hater being like but why the hell would you photoshop emrata she's perfect she's like a unicorn she's objectively beautiful but and people might assume that you've never actually had confidence or body image issues but i think i've read that as a kid you kind of struggled with that a tiny bit oh my um, god it's not even as a kid like hello like during quarantine like i'll wake up some days and be like oh no not you yeah um I mean I think that just like the whole idea of like oh anybody being perfect or anyone like not having body image issues is just crazy um I don't know I mean I've been lucky enough to know some of the most beautiful women in the world and like they can also be the most insecure so um no one has it easy and I think that like we're our own toughest critics so it's it's mm -hmm. a mental game and what's your advice for people to overcome that? Like, how do you just be nice to yourself? Like literally give yourself breaks. I mean, I think that, I don't know, one way that really helped me is the way that I love and support my girlfriends, like, mm -hmm. and like try to hype them up when they're like mm -hmm. in their bathing suits or whatever. I was like, why don't I do that to myself? And I, um, I think trying to do that mentally, like that's a, that's a little shortcut to do that sometimes. Or get arrested with your girlfriends. Like yes. the time you got arrested. Tell me about the time you got arrested when you were pro protesting. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to show you guys a screenshot. You oh can keep God, talking. You keep talking. I'll show them. Mm. Oh my God. Yes. Um, so Amy, um, I did a movie with Amy called I Feel Pretty. Um, she's just always been like, she's definitely one of those people who reaches out and supports other women just uh -huh. always and um she was like that with me and we did this movie together and she knows how politically active i am and um was like hey want to go get arrested with me tomorrow and i was like yeah girl and, just, um, that was it 
Like, that was you were literally, like, I'm not kidding you, that was the text message. I was like, cool, see you there. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, I took a train down with my girlfriend, Kat, who you've met, um, okay. and we went there to be arrested. Um, I think some people were like, wait, why? Like, what? How did that happen? But that's oh, basically okay. how a lot of protest works. Obviously, being arrested, like, that gets you more exposure to the conversation, to brings more light to the um, issue. And yeah, it was um, a pretty like, I don't know how much time you've spent in DC, but like, it's a little bit of a weird place. I actually, right before I went live with you, I was watching AOC. Mm -hmm. And I was like, God, it's so crazy that she like works in that place because it is not a space where there's a lot of women, not a lot of women of color. Um, and it was really interesting to be arrested there, but I'm really, really proud of that moment. And like, I hope I have more opportunities to, to do, do stuff that like that political action no i love that so your life leading up to where it is today and like everything that you've done you know going from like being a very sexy underdog in a sense to now being mm -hmm. super accomplished and i'm sure you have so much a more to come underdog i'm gonna put that in my bio you are a sexy underdog you were a sexy <laughs> underdog and I, I i was like yeah i mean you're just like a, i'm sure people actually just a pretty face you know um yeah. do you feel people take you more seriously now um, I think it's like a journey. Um, I think that one of the things that I've learned is not to worry so much about how people see me um, and just continue to do what I do. So, um, you know, to me, there is no um, issue with promoting my bathing suit line or taking a sexy photo when I'm feeling myself and then getting arrested because of a political thing or endorsing Bernie Sanders. So like, the fact that people have issues with that, I just don't care anymore. I love that. Um, and that's fuck the it. difference. I love it. You know, it's like how to live your life without giving a fuck. Okay, yeah. rapid random fire or mm -hmm. random rapid fire. Ready. <laughs> okay, favorite place you've ever visited? Mm. Japan. Okay, Tokyo. where do you buy your underwear? In a Marana. Okay, brief or thongs? Thong. Mm -hmm. First thing you do once Corona's over? Oh my god, um, go get wine drunk with my girlfriends at a restaurant. Okay, I'll crash that. Who's <laughs> someone who inspires you? Um, oh my god, so many people. Um, Gloria Steinem. Okay, back to your butt. What do you use to moisturize it? Um, I use Necessaire lotion, body lotion. Okay. It's amazing. Guilty pleasure? Chinese food. Hmm. Who's your least favorite person in the whole entertainment industry? Not Harvey Weinstein. Oh, fuck you knew i was gonna say that. i know um, <laughs> um who's my least favorite oh i don't know i mean i don't know if i can answer that question okay actually. fine don't answer mm -hmm. who's your hall pass person that you and sibo have said if this person comes up like hall pass oh my god we don't have hall pass i mean we should probably have, a we have that discussion we're, we're getting to like that point in our marriage <laughs> we should probably have that conversation um but i have to let's see who did i like really um shit i'm trying to think of like the last person that i was like damn so um wait give me a second oh on too hot to handle <laughs> he's gonna be like emily i can't believe you said this but the really buff tall black guy I think oh my god i was okay. like okay if i was he's, good looking. Island, he's, he's good, good looking he's good looking okay when do you feel you're most beautiful um, I feel my most beautiful when I've like taken my time getting ready, but haven't put on too much makeup and have a tan. Okay. And who's your favorite dermatologist? Shereen. Okay. I just had to have that said. All that right. Now. So fun. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Quick question for you. What's next for you with your whole platform and your brand? So, um, I'm really excited. We are actually launching some new product next week. Um, I'm shooting it. SIBO shooting me at home. So <laughs> everyone get ready for that campaign. Um, but, um, I'm really excited about that. And like, I think that we just really feel good about the growth in the next year. We're open going into new categories, all that stuff. And then obviously trying to get these essays published so you guys can read them. So very excited to read that. And yeah. then now who are you, who do you nominate for the next one night stand guest? Ashley Graham. I'm going to post this and tag that and tag her. And Ashley, her I mean, Ashley's so good at these. Like I did her podcast and she's just amazing. She's the best person. In she's a sweetheart. Too. You guys will be the dream. I love her. I love her. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Oh my gosh, for coming. I like feel like so I like wish I could have heard more of your questions and like talk to you more. But thank you for having me. And um, that was really, really fun. So much fun. I love you. I love you. Stay I love safe. you. And I'll Please see you so really soon. I'll crush your I'll wine. I'll be watching all the pillow talk terms. All right. Oh. Bye. Bye. So that was Emily. I hope you guys got to see a side of her that 
we don't usually see. We just kind of see her, you know, like in her beautiful pictures. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys got to know her better. And hope this was fun. And next time we're going to try to get Ashley Graham to join me on One Night Stand. All right. Good night. <laughs>